The last chance of the year to capture noctilucent clouds. We're passing the peak of Milky Way core season. Venus and Mars have an amazing conjunction. And there are four meteor showers that we need to talk about. Welcome back to another episode of What's in the Night Sky, sponsored by MPB. And this month is very similar to last month in terms of the perpetual twilight and the opportunity to photograph noctilucent clouds. So a quick recap. When the sun is between 0 and 6 degrees below the horizon, we experience civil twilight. When the sun is between 6 and 12 degrees below the horizon, we experience nautical twilight. When the sun is between 12 and 18 degrees below the horizon, we experience astronomical twilight, where most of the stars in Milky Way become visible. And once the sun is below 18 degrees, we experience complete darkness and the sun's light no longer lingers in the skies above. As it's summer in the Northern Hemisphere, anywhere northwards of roughly 50 degrees north in latitude will not experience proper darkness this month. So if you have a look at this rough map that I very quickly knocked up, those northward of roughly 60 degrees north will only experience civil twilight this month. Those above 55 degrees north, it will only get as dark as nautical twilight. And for those of you above 50 degrees north, the skies will only get as dark as astronomical twilight, which isn't too bad as you can still capture the Milky Way with some decent detail. So being in the high latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere is not very good for traditional astrophotography this month, but there is a silver lining quite literally in the noctilucent clouds. These clouds form from ice 85 kilometers above the polar regions. They're the highest known clouds to exist and for those of you in the perpetual twilight zone between latitudes 45 and 65 degrees north you have an opportunity to see them when the sun has dipped below the horizon. Its light illuminates the clouds from underneath which in turn makes them glow against the dark backdrop of twilight. They're incredibly beautiful to see glowing in the midnight sky and their appearance is always chance so they're very exciting to hunt but i won't go into much more detail in this video because i have an entire video dedicated to photographing these clouds so check that out if you haven't already for those of you below 55 degrees north in latitude and those of you in the southern hemisphere i'm sure you're wondering about the milky way opportunities this month so in the northern hemisphere the milky way core is found in the south southeast as darkness falls if you live at low latitudes you might be able to quickly bag a milky way panorama before the milky way arches too high overhead and as the night goes on the Milky Way core arches over the southern horizon reaching its highest point in the sky as it crosses the meridian in the south and then makes its way to set in the southwest in the pre-dawn hours. In the southern hemisphere the Milky Way core is high in the east as darkness falls and it passes directly overhead as the night goes on and then it sinks down to the western horizon in the pre-dawn hours. This is a good opportunity for a Milky Way arch panorama with the core at the apex. In the later hours of the morning, the Milky Way band then lies completely parallel with the horizon. Also, the large and small Magellanic clouds start the night low on the horizon in the south, as does the Carina Nebula and the Crux constellation, so it's a nice time to grab those with some foreground interest. Facing in the opposite direction to the north, you have the Cygnus region of the Milky Way arching over the horizon. Full moon this month is on the 3rd, so the best time to photograph the Milky Way will be during the middle of the month. And the July moon is known by Native American tribes as the buck moon as it's the time of year that bucks are rapidly growing new antlers. For this image that I recently captured in Istanbul I captured it with the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter DGDN lens and this is the Sony mount version. I used to have the Canon mount version because I used to shoot Canon and then when I switched to Sony I used the Canon mount version with an adapter but then they released a smaller lighter version for Sony. So I traded in the Canon mount version and the lens adapter to MPB and I used that money to buy this new lens and I've been super happy with it. MPB is the best place online to buy, sell and trade photography and videography gear. It completely takes all the faff out of selling your unused gear. So if you have any gear lying around that you haven't used for a while, Head on over to MPB by following the link in the video description down below. You can get an instant quote online. And if you're happy with that quote, you can arrange collection from your address at a time that suits you completely free of charge. And it's not just selling that's a joy on MPB, but when you buy gear, you get them at amazing prices and everything you buy from MPB comes with a six month warranty. So if you have any gear lying around that you haven't used for a while and you need to free up some funds, head on over to MPB by following the link in the video description down below and get an instant quote online. Now on to some moon and planet opportunities. So 
We start the month with a conjunction between Mars and Venus. I mentioned this in last month's video, they were getting closer and closer and closer, and the closest they will be is on July the 1st, so don't miss this. After July the 1st, Mars will climb higher and higher into the evening sky, but Venus will loop back towards the Sun. Venus reaches its maximum brightness on July the 9th, but by the time we get to the end of the month, it's difficult to spot Venus in the evening twilight skies. On July the 7th, there'll be a close approach of the Moon and Saturn. Four days later, on July the 11th, there'll be a close approach of the Moon and Jupiter. On July the 20th, the Moon makes a nice triangle with Mars and Venus. And a day later, on the 21st, it'll be a lot closer to Mars. And Mercury makes a return to the evening skies by the end of the month. So see if you can spot it along with Venus in the evening twilight. Now we also have a few meteor showers to talk about and the three that come to a peak this month massively favor the southern hemisphere. So I'll put a table up on screen. You can see we have the Pisces Austrinid meteor shower, the Alpha Capricornid meteor shower, and the more significant Southern Delta Aquarid meteor shower. And as you can see, they all come to a peak around July 28th to July 30th. So three meteor showers peaking around the same time. The ZHR or the zenithal hourly rate is the maximum number of meteors you can expect around the peak. So as you can see, the Southern Delta Aquarid is the more significant of the meteor showers. And the other thing you'll notice is the declination of the radiant point. So the negative number means that it's in the southern half of the night sky. So it's a lot better to be viewed from the southern hemisphere. If you're in the northern hemisphere, it's better to be at latitudes closer to the equator in order to see some meteors. And then the exciting news that the Perseids becomes active around the 17th of this month. Perseids is a lot more of an anticipated meteor shower because it can produce up to about 60 meteors per hour during the peak, but that doesn't occur until next month. So I'll talk about that more in next month's video. So make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already, because that's all I've got for you this month. Now onto the hashtag Wittens. For those of you that are new here, every month I set a target subject or theme for people to photograph, upload your images to Instagram using the hashtag Wittens, and then I pick my favorite three for a prize. Third place wins a copy of my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets. Second place wins a Constellation hoodie. And first place wins a copy of my book, Photographing the Night Sky. Last month's theme was Twilight, but we have an issue. There's been an update to the Instagram app such that when I go to the Wittens hashtag, there's only options for top posts and recent top posts. There's no way to see all of the posts to that hashtag anymore. There used to be a tab for recent posts and you could have a chronological feed of all of the images that were uploaded using that hashtag, but that's gone. I've tried my iPad, I've tried my browser on my computer. I can't access all of the images using that hashtag. So I haven't been able to see everybody's entries this month. So it looks like we're gonna have to do things a little bit differently going forward. So I'm gonna set up a form on my website which will allow you to upload some images, which will then get saved into a Google Drive and I'll go through those. But I'm a little bit worried that's gonna be a little bit too much effort for a lot of people. A lot of people might forget to do it because with Instagram, it's probably just quite natural to just add a bunch of hashtags when you're uploading an image. So this is like an extra bit of work to upload your image somewhere else. So we'll see how it goes. But if you guys have any other ideas of how I could view everybody's entries in a very efficient way that doesn't require much work from you guys uploading or me to look at the images, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. I can't receive images by DMs or emails because I get so many on a daily basis as it is, it would be impossible for me to keep track of all the entries on a daily basis and it would require me to do some organizational work potentially every day, which I'm not willing to do. So we'll use a form on my website for now, but again, if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments down below. So let's stick with the theme of Twilight for this month. Um, so head on over to the link in the video description down below and upload your images with the theme of Twilight. And maybe this will work out for the best because people started using the Witten's hashtag on all of the images they uploaded and it became difficult for me to go through all of the images 
from a single month. So maybe this will weed out a lot of the, uh, the off-topic images and maybe it'll work out for the best. But um, yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Witten's. If you're going to watch me the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies. Whew.